I'm Mr. Frog. This is my show. I ate the bug. I ate the bug. This is the end. I love you. Finally. Dude, finally. Over such a long period of time, Smiling Friends has finally been aired by the wonderful creators of Mr. Hadle, Psychic Pebbles, and Mr. Cusack. This show had not only managed to live up to the big amount of internet hype, but in my opinion, outperformed what was to be expected. To be quite honest, I was afraid I was hyping myself up a little too much before the show, but um, I was surprised. And this is Jeremy, your only form of hellish entertainment. <laughs> Dude, if you do that again, I'm gonna punch you. I'm not kidding. This show so far is my favorite show to have come out this year, which isn't saying much because, you know, 2022 barely just started, right? But I can assure you that it is in my top 10 personal favorite shows for many reasons. This show is masterfully controlled, and, and that may seem like such an overstatement, so, so what do I mean by that exactly? The humor is so absurd, the character designs so alien, just strange, interesting, a small green like jelly bean alien just speaking in gibberish like I don't what what is that I don't know why I like watching that though <laughs> and and yet they all act like normal nine to five regular Joes they breathe they eat they they cough they get offended at times they're just normal people and I don't know why I find it so funny. Maybe it's because of how genuine it feels. I, I relate to them. Uh, I've experienced a lot of these awkward social interactions they experienced. But when I look at what I'm watching, at the end, it's just a, a banana fly casually speaking over coffee. You know, I knew Mr. Frog had problems. I just never knew they went that deep. I mean, thankfully, I was the one who carried the show most of the time, but... I did what had to be done, so, you know, I can't complain. Another thing to note, besides the surreal humor and the character designs, is the amount of effort and detail in the show. Usually within an animated show, there are pieces within the foreground or just the background entirely where they're mostly there as a placeholder, not really given much thought. And rather than relying on the medium of animation to further express the delivery of the dialogue or humor, the animation can be secondary, even tertiary at times. I, I don't even know if tertiary is a word. I, I think that is, but it gives a subpar viewing experience not having much to go off of, not being too memorable visually. Those shows uh, relying more on the scripted jokes rather than focusing on the whole experience of viewing it. Now comparing those type of shows to this, right? When it comes to the animations, each character is coming to life by being extremely reactive to the way they deliver their dialogues and reacting to their surroundings like if they're real, like if they're like if they're truly animated. Whether it's reacting to someone else's movement or to an object next to them, it's subtle but not unnoticed. And these features make the scenes along with the setup of the jokes that much more genuine, making the punchline way better. Everything is in motion, and the animation medium is being properly taken advantage of. The show is traveling like at whiplash speed, with jokes and background jokes just popping up left and right, keeping you entertained the whole way through. There's always going to be, like, something to look at, for sure, when you're watching an episode. Whether it's a two-framed loop of a running pink baby, or some gym dude psyching himself up and never coming to lift a barbell, I... I don't know why I noticed that specifically, but I just find that one really funny. And and I can't stop thinking about that that damn baby thing. Like that baby just going up the stairs. I don't know what's going on in the head of that baby, but it's just the funniest thing ever looking at it. Even though each episode is like about 11 minutes, I have watched the entire season like three times already because of how much content there is stuffed into a short amount of time, never being less funny when you're viewing it. 
each time I watch, I have new appreciation over something I didn't notice in my previous runs, such as a background joke, or as I mentioned earlier, the subtle movements from characters in each bit. Or better yet, the intricate background designs that feel so legit and make me want to hop in there and explore a bit. My favorite one being the Mr. Frog's pool area. That, like that one. I don't know why, I, I just want to hop in the jacuzzi there. It just looks perfect to me. And when it comes to visual details, uh, there, there's one where I completely missed. And looking back on it, it just made me laugh for so long. If you don't want to get spoiled, uh, and if you want to watch the episode yourself, you can skip to this time code I put right here. Uh, but if you want to continue watching, go ahead. Three, two, one. One of my favorite things that continues to make me laugh is the Enchanted Forest episode. Uh, specifically the ending when Mip's bomb is delivered to the princess. Now, th that's just like a simple bait and switch type of plot we'd expect, the present being something crazy. But I remembered watching this clip on YouTube again, and someone pointed out in the comments that the bomb's design was like eerily identical to the Unabomber's Bob design. And, and when I compared these two images together, I, I just started laughing for like 20 minutes straight because of how how dark it made this character Mip. Uh, Mip being this cheery little hobbit, this cheery little guy, and it turned him into like this fucking monster, like an actual psychopath. And now I'm imagining Mip, this hobbit, reading Ted Kaczynski's manifesto. And that image, it just makes me laugh even more than what the joke <laughs> presented. I'm just imagining that image and it gives way more than what was presented in the show. I think the level of attention to these characters you barely get to know about makes their actions, the humor, their entire being in the show that much more memorable. That genuineness of having these characters be so relatable set this show apart from a ton of other shows. To dig deeper, there's a moment during an interview with one of the creators, Zach, Psychic Pebbles, when he shared his perspective on life that it was interesting in how he sees people as well, and I think this is crucial in understanding why this show sets itself apart very well. Having some kind of light at the end of the tunnel is what the point of life is, is goals, in my opinion. Otherwise, you will rot, and I think that's all midlife crisis is. It's not like you're unhappy or this or this. It's you have no goals. You're, just, you're in a slog. What is the height of what you want to accomplish? I think if you have that in mind, you will never be miserable in, in the true sense of, of being alive. You will never have a lack of purpose. And in the Smiling Friends pilot, we really tried to hit on that. I do believe everything that character says, right? That the sun is going to explode and that you're all, we're all going to be dead. I do believe that, but I'm not a nihilist. I really also believe that is what makes life so inherently interesting and fun and like beautiful. Like I love looking at, one of my favorite pictures to look at of all time is um, the New York City market from like 1910. And it's a bunch of people looking up at this little camera that's been placed. And it's a bunch of faces looking up into the lens of this camera. And um, I love looking at that picture because I go, everyone there is dead. And everyone in that image had like a favorite joke, uh, a biggest fear, a most embarrassing moment. Like they, oh, they all were all going, fuck. You remember when I was 23 and I drank so much, I shit myself and I threw up and I <laughs> called that guy an asshole. They go, every day they wake up and they go, fuck. But then they also wake up and they, and they go, oh man, I love this woman that, that is like at this flower shop across the street. But we don't know any of that. It's all lost. And so we don't know, like, we don't know their names. We don't know uh, anything about them, but they're living in a bubble of time. And saying all of that, it is this view of 80 billion people have lived before us, right? 80 billion humans have lived and died. We don't know their names. We're in a little bubble. We're going to die someday. Set a bunch of goals. What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to view yourself as in five years or 10 years? And I know that's a little bit ridiculous. I'm a fucking guy that draws, you know, stupid characters. I'm in no position to be giving anybody advice, but that is kind of the lens that I look at reality from. Some people would say that a piece of work reflects something from the artist, whether it's their mental state, 
their ideology, or their perspective. Perhaps this is why the show flows naturally in presenting these characters. If you give the show a watch, or if you already watched it, you would know that the characters are extremely relatable. It hits the nail on the head and how these critters carry themselves and how they interact with other people. Like they could very easily be people you meet in real life. Especially the character DJ Spit. If you live around LA, oh, you would meet like 10 DJ Spits like everywhere. And with that comes the beauty of the wackiness, uh, the wackiness of regular people. It's kind of like we're laughing at ourselves in a way when we see these critters. It, it feels real. In my opinion, because of this relatability, the best episodes both in humor and plot-wise were the ones in which they tackled these common issues of unhappiness. Whether it was an issue of losing a sense of purpose, being misguided by negative emotions, or stuck in an unsatisfying lifestyle. Now, Smiling Friends, they, they never tried to push a message, or got into a time-to-get-deep quote-unquote moment, but I still had an introspective moment, a, a self-reflection when they showed Satan in the final episode. Satan being this unproductive person playing rust in the computer, avoiding responsibilities in his room, and in general avoiding emotions by hitting more dopamine rushes. <laughs> the whole setup, the whole area felt so real that <laughs> That in a way, I will admit, I, I saw myself a bit in that scene. And I think that makes it more humorous, personally. It just showed Satan being lame, and I felt lame too. And, and while still funny, it, it really made me go and walk my dogs or do something. It, it, just, it was just sobering watching that. And now, if this were another show, I feel like a lot of other animated shows would try to spin the situation as like a time to get deep moment and get down to the existential issues of not being satisfied and will have this depressed horse go through a moment of solace. And now don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not saying a show can do that, right? I'm not saying a show can make it actually insightful and bring out emotions from a viewer. But what I am saying though is that haven't we had enough of that from comedy shows? And thank God for Smiling Friends, for both showing quality in what animation can bring out, and for just giving humor with no strings attached as well. And it's not like the creators of the show are avoiding dark topics either. The creators of the show don't shy away from the honest, harsh truth. They'll draw the stretch marks, they'll draw the varicose veins on their characters, and they'll just make jokes out of it. And maybe that's why I grew so fond of the show since the pilot episode. Because through that dark and existential nothing matters mentality still lies humor, surprisingly. And also, surprisingly, a light at the end of the tunnel, something positive and funny to think about. And let me break character here for a second. I think now, more than ever, we're gonna need comedy, especially during the past couple of years that people have been through. And the last thing I want to see on my comedy show now are more problems and tragedy. Shows that are effortlessly and cynically made, tossed at my way. I just want to enjoy a show to enjoy life, <laughs> to laugh, really. And for that reason, for setting the bar of what good quality should be for animated shows, and for the much needed humor we need in our lives now, that's why it's up there for one of my favorite shows. And funny enough, the Smiling Friends uh, truly did put a smile on my face.